How pack sheds on fruit and vegetable farms are designed has an enormous impact on a farm's profitability and the ease of day-to-day -day operations. A well-designed and brightly lit area that is large enough to move around in improves worker comfort and safety and increases efficiency when moving product. Because of the overlap between human pathogens and plant pathogens, a space that is well ventilated and easy to clean will both improve produce safety and extend product shelf life. This video shows how beginning farmers on leased land designed a simple open pack shed that works for their small operation. My name is Ansel Plug. Um, I run Flywheel Farm with my partner, Justin Cody. We farm about two acres um, in central Vermont. Um, this is our second year farming in this location. And um, we farm, 70% of our stuff goes wholesale in restaurants, and about 30% is retail through our farm stand. We farm on leased land. We have a rolling five-year lease, so we have a little bit of security with that. So this structure is an eight by eight um, woodshed that's supposed to fit four cords of wood. And it's just a very simple pole barn structure. We thought, well, that looked like something we could build, not having a lot of experience building. This is not on a foundation, so it's just in the ground. The posts go into the ground two or three feet. Uh, every post and then where the floor is there are some blocks like cinder blocks like patio blocks set down like maybe under this eight by eight section there might be nine of them six or nine of them under there. This is a very greens focused pack shed there's no room for a barrel washer in here we process all of our roots basically outside. We don't do a lot of roots or, or potatoes. If you're a farmer and you know, like you want to do carrots, um, you would have a very different setup. We wanted to make sure we did the triple rinse and we wanted enough sinks so that we could have multiple things washing at a time if we weren't needing to triple rinse them. And it just ended up working really well to have these Home Depot sinks, these laundry sinks. We wanted it to be uniform and easy, and um, we needed a place to store packaging materials, uh, a place to drain greens, a uh, place for our salad spinner, and um, a place to box things. And that's kind of the concept we started last year with and then we added a walk-in cooler to it. So there's an outdoor sink for washing tools, for washing hands. These are only for produce. I really wanted to create a flow where uh, clean produce wasn't going back over dirty produce. So um, that was really hard to do in a square um, where we were kind of coming in over here and leaving over here. So that took a bit of work to come up with this uh, horseshoe shape, um, but that was really important. And that's not just a food safety thing, that's also an efficiency thing. Like everybody knows which way the produce is going. These two buckets are kind of cull buckets for when we're pulling out greens um, or other vegetables. The uh, five gallon buckets that are marked with teal spray paint are our harvest buckets and it just means that that's all they're used for. Um, they only have vegetables matter in them. They're never used for compost. They're never used to move dirt around the farm and we try to keep them really clean and, and not let them get really gunky. Things that we that aren't working or need to be changed or need to be added to. We really want a drainage bench and we haven't set lights up yet. So it gets dark in here when during a thunderstorm or late at night when we're picking at 830 at night, it's really hard to process and, and sort greens. This space works really well um, as kind of a hub as a center piece to the farm. 
early on we had our phone somewhere else we had electricity somewhere else we had our storage in the barn everything was spread out so doing a simple task like picking a case of arugula involved moving around the farm quite a bit now we feel like we're getting it to the point where we can do a complete task from this point we built cooler onto the side of our pack house the dimensions of the cooler are seven by five by six feet high and it brings the total size of our pack house to eight by twenty so we did our research most of it was through the coolbot website um, because they give a lot of information on the requirements for um, just insulation and looking at what other people building small refrigerated units for themselves and yeah it's not a prefabricated piece it's all put together um, the inside has um, a plastic sheeting I think it's called dairy board it's nice um, we really like how it turned out with uh, like a non-porous wall non-porous floor and um, it, it, it was worth getting it so we built it to this size because um, we're not investing a lot in infrastructure on our lease to land. Um, we had discussed the possibility of moving it somewhere else in the future, it being small enough. Um, it's unlikely that we'll do that. Um, the cost, it cost, you know, maybe a couple thousand, between two and three thousand dollars to put it all together, which seems like a lot of money at the time. But one of the things we value most is our ability to adapt. So our we don't have like a, a plan that goes any further than five years out. So when we talk to like debt counselors and people about borrowing money, they really advocated that we just put something together, like small and cheap. And it may not suit where we are in five years, but it's not going to dictate what we are. It's a small investment. Yeah, it works great.